In German, it's the Panzer. In French, it's known as the Char de l'Assault, but in English, we know it as the tank. Yet even after a hundred years since military tanks first entered service, this, at least from a linguistic point of view, can be somewhat confusing. Why are tanks called tanks? Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alex Garner, and if you like tanks and all things military history, then be sure to like and subscribe. But anyway. In this video, we're going to be talking about tanks, of course, but today we'll deal specifically with the term tank and how this word has enthroned itself as a universal word in one of the most important branches of modern warfare and military doctrines around the world. The word tank carries a certain weight and power. It invokes images of massive armoured vehicles thundering across battlefields, leaving destruction in their wake. But have you ever wondered how these formidable war machines came to be known as tanks? Let us embark on a short journey to explore the origins of this intriguing word. The birth of the word tank can be traced back to the First World War, a crazy period that witnessed the emergence of new technologies and strategies. In the early stages of the war, a secret project was underway to develop an armoured vehicle capable of traversing treacherous terrains and withstand enemy fire. On the 15th of September 1916, the British forces prepared for an offensive during the Battle of the Somme. During this battle, they deployed a new type of armoured vehicle. These vehicles, originally called land ships to maintain the element of surprise, were designed to traverse the treacherous terrain of no man's land and provide support for the infantry. There are a few ideas on how the name tank came to be, so let's start off with a meeting in December 24th, 1915, where the Director of Naval Constructions Committee, the Admiralty, the Ministry of Munitions and the War Office were all present at a conference. Its goal was to talk about the development of designs for Caterpillar machine gun destroyers, also known as land cruisers. I'll now read a short quote from Albert Gerard Stern from his autobiography about that meeting and why the tank got its name. Mr. Thomas J. McNamara then suggested, for secrecy's sake, to change the title of the Landship Committee. Mr. Dienko agreed that this was a very desirable to retain secrecy by all means, and proposed to refer to the vessel as a water carrier. In government offices, committees and departments are always known by their initials. For this reason, I, as secretary, considered the proposed title totally unsuitable. In our search for a similar term, we changed the word water carrier to tank and became the Tank Supply or TS Committee. However, in July 1918, the then popular Science Monthly reported a contradicting idea to where the name tank actually came from, and I quote, because a fellow of the Royal Historical Society has unintentionally misled the British public as to the origin of the famous tanks, Sir William Tritton, who designed and built them, has published the real story of their name. Since it was obviously inadvisable to herald Little Willie's reason for existence to the world, he was known as the Instructional Demonstration Unit. Little Willie's hull was called in the shop orders a water carrier for Mesopotamia. No one knew the hull was intended to be mounted on a truck. Naturally, the water carrier began to be called a tank, so the name became used by the managers and foremen of the shop until it now has a place in the army vocabulary and probably will be known in history for all time. An interesting idea, but there is another reason along similar lines. On the morning of September 15th, 1916, in the fields of northern France, these bizarre-looking metal giant land ships rumbled onto the battlefield. The Mark I tank's appearance was unlike anything previously seen in warfare. Resembling large metal boxes on tracks, they advanced slowly but steadily, crushing obstacles in their path and deflecting enemy fire with their thick armour. It was during this historical battle that the term tank was used to describe these vehicles. The reason for this naming choice can be attributed to the widespread confusion of their purpose. As the armoured vehicles made their way across the battlefield, the loud noises of their engines and the massive clouds of dust they raised led to the soldiers to believe they were water tanks or mobile water carriers. As their official name was still unknown, the soldiers who witnessed them in action described them as tanks due to their resemblance of large metal containers used for holding water. This confusion Fusion eventually gave birth to the name tank, which stuck and became widely accepted term for these armoured behemoths. I find it very interesting how although there are a few different stories on how the word tank came to be, they all follow a very similar idea. It just shows that when faced with an object which is unnamed, people from soldiers to government officials to factory workers will automatically start relating it to an object which is already known and named, which in this case was a water tank. The name stuck, and from then on, these armoured vehicles became commonly known as tanks. The term tank was eventually adopted by the British military and then quickly spread to other countries. Over time, the designs and capabilities of tanks have evolved, but the name has remained the same. As the war raged on, the term tank transcended its secret origins and entered the dictionaries of various countries. The success of these armoured vehicles on the battlefield led to their widespread recognition and adoption. The word tank was embraced by different languages, incorporating it into their military terminology. The notion of a heavily armoured vehicle that could plough for enemy lines itself became synonymous with the name tank itself. In the modern era of warfare, military jargon has undoubtedly evolved to encompass a myriad of complex and specialised terminology. However, the word tank has managed to withstand the test of time. It has become deeply written in metal letters in military jargon around the world, representing a symbol of power and 
resilience. Despite technological advancement and the introduction of new armoured vehicles, the term tank has remained a constant, invoking a sense of fear and respect on the battlefield. While the name tank has stood strong for over a century, there has always been a possibility of a change in language and its meanings. Words adapt and transform, reflecting the shifting tides of culture and society norms. However, the replacement of a word as deeply ingrained as tank would not be an easy task. It would require a new term to capture the essence of these armoured giants, a term that encapsulates the sheer force and impenetrability. Finding a suitable replacement would be a daunting challenge. Should a change in the name tank ever be proposed, the acceptance of such a shift would undoubtedly depend on the cooperation and agreement of the armies around the world. The term has become a unifying symbol, transcending borders and nationalities. Any alteration to the shared vocabulary would require extensive coordination and consensus among military leaders and linguistics alike. The legacy of the word tank is deeply intertwined with the history of warfare, making its replacement a topic of great significance. The word tank holds a powerful place in military vernacular, carrying it a rich history of innovation, deception and triumph. Its origins in the First World War and subsequent adoption into various languages has solidified its status as a timeless descriptor of these imposing war machines. While change is an inherent part of language, the replacement of tank would be a formidable challenge. As we look to the future, it remains to be seen whether the name tank will continue to resonate across the battlefields of the world or whether a new term will eventually emerge ushering in a new era of armoured warfare. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have enjoyed it, there should be some more videos popping up on your screen right now that you might find interesting. My name is Alex Garner. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.